If you have a question or a comment for our podcast, give us a call 406-219-7839 or email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. We have a question today from Abel in New Jersey. I have two storage units filled with stuff and I'm about to move into a new apartment. What is the best way to start off my new life and my new apartment with a minimalist point of view? So, Julia, this is another problem that we have. Our homes become so overabundant with stuff that we seek out other areas to hide our clutter. Now, I don't know about Abel specifically. Maybe she is moving and she's moved all of her things into storage. That's one way to do it. And now she's saying, I want to extract the things that add value to my life, bring it into my new minimalist home. Mm -hmm. So I'm avoiding the clutter up front. And bravo, if that's the case. Or if you're like many people who just store a lot of things, you're like my former self. I ran out of space in my basement, my attic, my closet, et cetera. And so, hey, I know what I'll do. I'll spend 200 bucks a month on more space. (laughs) Now, I will say this. There are times where it makes sense to have a storage unit. Yeah. And so I'm not against storage units by and large. I mean, it doesn't make sense to be completely against them. It's not binary. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. The storage units become a problem when they allow us to hide even more clutter. When they lose their function, then we're holding on to more of our hoard. Mm -hmm. I, I need excess space for this excess stuff. For clutter. If there is clutter in the storage unit, then it is a problem. Well, what is clutter? Clutter is merely something that gets in the way. It could physically get in the way, but we've gotten it out of the way because we put it in a storage locker. Mm. But now maybe it's still getting in the way financially. You're spending more money on that storage unit. It's getting in the way emotionally or psychologically because you're thinking about that stuff that's out there. And so how would you talk to someone like Abel, Julia, mm-hmm. who, where she wants to start this new minimalist life? Mm-hmm. She's going into a new home, a blank slate. Where does she start? That's so exciting, first of all, to it begin really with. Is. Like when I think about an empty space, I get really excited. Yeah. Even when I work in homes that are not empty, I always empty the space so we can reimagine what it can become. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love that, first of all. And if it is the first scenario that you were talking about of she's temporarily placing her belongings there because she just moved, I guess, then in that case, this is the perfect time to declutter. Um, I wouldn't say I'm anti-storage unit always, but I am most of the time if the purpose is just to stuff clutter in there because you've ran out of room in your home. Uh, So I think moving is always a great time to reevaluate your belongings. And if she really wants to start a minimalist home in this new space, let's try to not need those storage units anymore. I would empty them, see what she really needs and everything else potentially should go. Why keep those storage units any longer? Uh, I can think of so many other uses for that money than storing that stuff. Um, If it, I don't know if she also has a home full of things on top of the storage units too. If that were the case, I would really ask her when was the last time she ever needed to go into those storage units to access any of those things. Um, What are those types of things too? Um, It may be things that are from deceased relatives that she doesn't want to deal with. Uh, And so this could be an opportunity to work with an organizer to finally decide, I'm going to go through these things and make some Mm -hmm. decisions on them. Mm -hmm. This is similar to my own personal story. I didn't have a storage unit, but I had been moving around apartments all over LA for many years. And we didn't have a garage. We didn't have a storage unit either. So I had probably 10 boxes, large tubs of my grandmother's belongings. She died in 98. So Mm. it took me until 2020 to let it go. So I like sharing this because it was not easy for me to let go either. Somehow my boyfriend, now husband, allowed me to (laughs) carry this stuff everywhere and have it shoved in our closets. But eventually, um, as I was decluttering my belongings is the last thing that I dealt with. Enough was enough. And even Mm. for me, just having that open space in the garage and a few of her items are now displayed in my home office. I see them every day instead of having them stuffed in the garage or the storage unit. It's such a better way to honor her memory and and everything. So I don't know the the contents of what's in that storage unit, but I would want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. And this is the great a great opportunity. That's that's what I would say to someone who wants to move into a new home and potentially just let it all go. Yeah, it is a great opportunity. Yeah. I'm thinking if if I was able, I would like bring over the bare minimum mm-hmm. and then like I would test that out for 30 days and like mm-hmm. see how my mm-hmm. life felt. And if I'm like, oh man, like I really need some of that stuff in the storage unit or what, then I would like bring some stuff in kind of slowly. Um, but that's a process. Like that's not easy. It's simple. Mm -hmm. But it's not very easy to do that because you're making trips back and forth. Like moving sucks in general, let alone like if you have to make trips back and forth from your storage unit uh, in the first three months, like that's going to add more stress. So 
I think like, yeah, h- hiring a professional organizer might be a good idea for Abel because maybe they can kind of help her set it up a little bit better rather than like spending months of like going back and forth. I don't know. Yeah. I uh, personally, I would go back and forth, but again, that's, I'm always, I, I go the extreme route all the time anyway. Well, yeah. And this is, you're forcing yourself into something that any move is an extreme thing, right? Mm-hmm. Moving all of the possessions you've accumulated over the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Mm-hmm. That's an extreme thing. Even if you don't own much, I, you know, I moved recently and a friend texted me and she was like, Hey, how, how'd the move go? I'm like, it's simple. I'm mm-hmm. a minimalist, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that I enjoy doing it. Even right. for a minimalist, <laughs> it's still a relatively extreme thing to have to do to fill your car with all of your possessions. To is unorganize an it thing. and reorganize it. <laughs> yes. it's, it's extreme, right? Yeah. So it wasn't, as Ryan said, it wasn't easy, but it was mm-hmm. simple, yeah. relatively speaking. Now, what you're talking about, Ryan, is sort of a hybrid version of your packing party. Yeah, in a way, really? Yeah. It, where instead of unpacking everything in your home, you're leaving it in a storage unit and you're going to get it as you need it. Mm-hmm. And it's important to set up some boundaries there. And one of those boundaries might be, hey, I'm going to bring things in slowly over the course of 21 days mm-hmm. or one month or two months. I wouldn't yeah. go much further than that. Certainly not farther than 90 days for me because then you have the seasonality rule, mm-hmm. right? And then I would find what boundaries work for you, Abel. You can download our free ebook. It's called 16 Rules for Living with Less. It's the minimalist rule book over at theminimalists.com slash rulebook. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Or if you'd like the audiobook version of that, you can find that there as well. Mm. But Abel, I'd be happy to send you a copy of that. I also want to send you a copy of our book, Everything That Remains. Because this was really the story of me and Ryan. We started letting go of the excess, moving. I mean, we moved across the country into Montana. Everything oh. I own fit into my car. Even that oversized lamp. I don't know why I tried to cram the damn lamp in the car. <laughs> I ended up not even needing it. Yeah. But um, the truth is that even then, there were things that I was able to start letting go of. And I only realized that when I set up some boundaries in my life. And we yeah. talk about some of those boundaries and everything that remains. So I, I did have a storage unit when we moved out to Montana. I had a storage unit back in Dayton, Ohio, because I didn't know if we were going to be in Montana. You know, I didn't know how long. So I uh, went back to Ohio, I think, after being in Montana for a few months. And I was like, oh, like I just need to get rid of this stuff. So I like created a little Craigslist ad, did a yard sale, got as much money as I could. But, you know, doing the math, I'm bringing this up for Abel, like doing the math. If I would have kept that storage unit for a year or two, it would have been sunk cost at that point. I just spent more money on that storage unit than what was actually in that storage unit, uh, what was worth in there. So Abel, I would look at that too. Like, how long have you had it? What's all that stuff monetarily worth? If it is worth something, great, go ahead and sell it. But you actually might be saving money by just like getting rid of that stuff. I also think it matters whether this is only, these are only Abel's possessions or other people's yeah, possessions, right? right? Yeah, yeah, because I don't ever recommend letting go of things uh, That's know, without point. other people's consent. <laughs> we don't know that information, yeah, right? right? It may be other people's things that would want to have a say in this too. Yeah, so, right. So be I, considerate <laughs> of other people's possessions. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so important it because I, I often yeah. get told that too. Like people will say, can I, I, I give you consent, throw away all my husband's things. I'm like, I'm not going to do that without their permission because they're never going to trust me. And this is also just not good for your marriage to do these things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so just wanted to clarify that in my advice So too. she says she's not a therapist, but you do play a really good therapist. Oh, though. wow. You know, I do so much mediation. I never thought I was going to have to do that between couples constantly oh, yeah. where they will be arguing in front of me about stuff. Mm-hmm. And I am that neutral third party where I make things like <laughs> happen. That's I neutralize great. things for uh, them. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist's private podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash theminimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.